Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna have a look at this Hewlett Packard DL380 generation 1 but with a dash attached to it direct attached storage um, this noisy box this is really old hardware this is closing to 20 years old if you like me like to shop hardware and get some servers that are a bit newer and actually usable well I'm starting to promote bargain hardware in the UK so for a bit of time I've actually been looking for a company that would be willing to work with me and with you on um, on doing kind of a sponsorship here so bargain hardware were willing to do that they have specialized in refurbishing and selling enterprise hardware um, either you can you can buy whole servers or you can buy parts there's also workstation and computer parts uh, but we are probably mainly gonna be sticking to the server parts it kind of works the way that you start with a bare bone server with nothing in it and that's really cheap that almost doesn't cost much for sure and then you put in stuff uh, processors, RAM, hard drives, power supplies all that stuff that needs to be in your server for it to be working and stuff and that's where it becomes really expensive because well you want the best stuff don't you most of the time you have to uh, waver out how much you really want in there but it's possible to to build a, a very small system and a very big system and at bargain hardware you actually get one year of return to base guarantee on your stuff and um, I'm gonna do a video where we're gonna try and put together a, a system and maybe I don't know if I'm gonna order it but we might at least go through the order form and yeah I, I might do that at some point and just see what we get but one year of return to base warranty so if something goes wrong with the server well you can send it back that is of course not cheap shipping stuff is not cheap but at bargain hardware well they do have reasonable shipping prices um, I can tell you that shipping out of here is bloody expensive so it would be way cheaper for me to get a server from the UK than for me to send a server just over the border to Germany um, weird as heck yeah but also they have spare parts so if you're looking for some kind of weird spare parts they have that too the way this works is that you go and find whatever you want on their web page and at the checkout there's a coupon code and you can enter my playhouse all um, small capital letters small letters and with no space my playhouse and you get five percent off um, the margin on this sort of stuff is apparently a lot lower than one should expect um, I have seen similar numbers here in Denmark which uh, that would also be 5% so at checkout you can get a 5% discount for entering my playhouse in the coupon code thinky so uh, yeah and if you go ahead and buy something I'll be very interested in hearing how that worked out for you uh, of course you should always check the prices different places um, this is one option you should check other options as well it's a good option but back to the Hewlett Packard dash here let's um, have a closer look at that so here we are this is the dash that is attached well it isn't attached right now but it's we are gonna try and attach it to this server and um, yeah it's not as long as the server and the server is really not long either uh, back in the days they made servers a lot less deep so around here we have two <laughs> those are some beefy fans they uh, they even heat up the, all those hot drives they produce a lot of heat um, it's not warm warm it's just warmish it's, it's not cold um, but it's a bad headline so but yeah um, but really the drives are only in this part of the, the disc shell and I do believe that you can take it apart and probably change the back plane in there so we need to find some connectors for that this is old scotchy cables I am not oh, ultra tree it says here 
and down on the server there is a there's another connector down there, a really long one. So I have my I have my trusty box of Scotchy cables here, and um, well, I thought that we were gonna go through this, but the top one was really actually the right one. It has has this really long connector. I will go in the server, and this has this. That's not it, is it? Oh, I, I'm not sure. I, it actually might be the right one. It looks kind of right. So let's try and hook this up. It's way too long, but I think we can manage that. Can you hear that? There is a definitely one of these drives has a bad bearing. Uh, these are squashy drives. Let's just take one of them out. So this was definitely not the one with the noise and this is a 146.8 gigabyte 15,000 rpm drive that is sitting here um, I remember getting these when I got this uh, the drives were still worth money so I paid up to I think 400 Danish kroners for some of these drives just because they were expensive at that point so it checks out the drive and this is just the drive tray I'm pretty sure that there is a 146 gigabyte drive in here as well oh that's another one it's an IBM yeah I took what I could get so also 146.8 gigabytes but the box really it took all kind of good drives as long as as they were those squashy drives they would work in here okay so when we're gonna oh. be playing with the cables I, I'm gonna detach power to both the both the storage device and the server so um, I think we need to unwrap this we can just pull it a little bit can't we and then we need to put this in um, these are very fragile uh, it's very easy to put them in wrong because they're almost round here but not entirely round so this is a really poor design because if you really want to you could put it in the wrong way and I'll guarantee that it's not gonna work very well so let's just put that in the top one. Oh, it fits so it's the right one there and I'll screw it in just so that I don't break anything yeah and the other end oh it's this long one and that goes down into the server uh, actually it goes into the Scotia adapter on the system board which is um, pretty cool that they had that but very often the system board Scotia adapter wasn't good enough so you would actually purchase uh, other Scotty adapters that you would also have in the system. So this long connector goes here. There. These cables were bloody expensive. I remember that I had to order some of these. My uh, my good boss at the time he uh, he purchased this and then sometimes he forgot the cable or didn't get the cable and I had to find these cables and well that meant that when I had to when we had to throw the servers out at some point, I knew what those cables cost, so I collected them instead of throwing them out. Um, so I have them now. A whole box of Scotchy interfaces. Well, this is a good example. This is the same big cable, external Scotchy adapter with some internal plugs as well, and some of these connectors and other connectors. And then, you know, this is another Scotchy adapter. Probably more like back then you also used Scotchy adapters for your scanners and well even digital cameras had Scotchy interfaces on them sometimes. Let's put power back on this beast. It's a it's a noisy one. There. There we are. Seems like we're good again. Uh, oh. Oops. Seems like uh, the connection is not that great. There's something going on in here. So let's turn on the server. There we are. Yeah. 
it's very noisy. I remember something about the, the noise on the last video being way more than I'm used to. So um, probably I have to turn the microphone around to speak to you. Hmm. Oh, screen. Did we not connect the monitor? We did not. It needs to go in as well. Otherwise it's going to be hard to do anything. Oh, same thing. There we are. Okay, I am pointing the microphone backwards this time to see if I can minimize some of the noise because, well, this server is noisy and the camera is really close to it. I could probably try and move it back a little bit or move it to the other side. Fortunately, I will only know when we hit the editing if this was worth it. All the old novel netware login screen brings back memories. But um, yeah, we need to just log in here. There we are. And it's going to be very interesting to see if it sees this dash over here. No, does not seem like we have anything here. We only have the boot drive and the CD-ROM drive. So, um, I think we'll add some network to it this time. So, um, let's pop in there. Let's see if it likes a gigabit connection on that 100 megabit. That's gonna be interesting. Okay, looks like we got a, a network connection here. Um, but it did not automatically get an internet connection. So, uh, yeah, there are some VMware networking on here as well because of that. VMware workstation that is on here. It's uh, uh, routing the network over to VMware as well. Down here it says that we don't really have a connection. So I'll be messing a little bit with that. Okay, um, I'm hoping to um, update Windows a little bit. It uh, hasn't been updated in 10 years. So uh, <clears throat> it's, it's a little bit behind. Like this Internet Explorer. Uh, it's impossible to work with. Um, everything is totally outdated. Okay, it's actually Internet Explorer 7, so it could be worse. Okay, I've been messing around with this for a while. And um, yeah, I think I found the error that I'm um, dealing with here. So um, let's let's check the screen here. It's yeah, it's kind of stupid. Okay, I've been trying to, uh, to put the right software on the windows here. And I've been trying to get some Hewlett Packard software that is really old from back in 2005 and it wasn't really working. Um, but then I booted the server and I, I realized that, well, it actually tells me here that there's a problem. It tells me that the internal and the external drives cannot be both attached to the same SCSI port, SCSI port one. Uh, this kind of tells me that the internal SCSI port in the server and the external SCSI port in the server is actually the same SCSI controller. And um, yeah, you can't do that. We need to put in another SCSI controller to get this up and running. Um, I think. So let's just power this off. Uh, remove power again. I didn't think we were going to go down this road today. Here we have the ports. And I do have another SCSI controller just laying around for this occasion. Not really, but it has the same awesome Y connector out the front here. This is an Adaptec one. So if we put that in, we're probably going to run into some other difficulties. Oh, taking this cable off, we don't need that. So will this fit? Yeah, I think so. Um, let's take this. I tried to connect to this network card here. The internet is also weird on this, so um, I tried to connect to that. It didn't really work. Yeah, let's let's take this out. It's it's a 100 megabit card. We can manage without it. The one in the server is working okay. -ish. So. Okay, let's put the cover back on and see if our adaptive controller here will work. Only problem is that now it's not a Hewlett Packard controller, but an adaptive controller. And I will not be able to use the Hewlett Packard software. But if we are lucky, 
the controller is pretty smart so okay let's turn it on see if it sees that adaptive controller now let's see that's the bias the cpus now the internal integrated smart array controller from compact in the charging and my best guess is that we get an adaptive controller after that now we probably need to press Control A or something too. Control C, uh, adaptive Control A. Yeah, we have our adaptive controller. So, Scotchy disk. Let's see, do we see any disks? And it's good. Oh, we have disks. Awesome. Just look at that. We have some compact disk. We have that IBM that I took out. Uh, some other disks. Then we have the RAID controller itself. No device, no device, no device, and then I don't know what that is. Uh, there's nothing in there. This looks good. This looks suspicious. And this disc will just be presented to the operating system. So um, let's just try and boot this up. Um, this controller does not really have any options of RAID. It's kind of an HBA for SCSI drives. So let's just quit and. Uh, press any key to boot okay now that error is gone now that I put in another controller and not connecting the cable to the same controller as the internal drives you might remember there is three drives down here and they are actually in a RAID configuration they are in a RAID 5 and it also handles this LTO drive over here the the tape drive so that is all good adaptive controller also shows up with some something some drive it does not like this drive apparently uh, don't know what that is all about okay i've run into one more glitch here the new scotchy controller that i put in the server well it wanna it wants to be the the primary one it wants to be the one booting on and i'm trying to figure that out i actually got into the other the built-in one um, very shortly on the boot up you can press F10 and you can you can see some information and it's from 1999 it's rather old and it's uh, running RAID 5 on these three drives which is kind of cool um, I can only delete that or I can exit so uh, there's not much option right here I'm gonna see if I can get into the into the adaptive one okay so i did make it into the adaptive controller but let's see what we have we have the drives here we have something called compact bullion down here number 12 and uh, with a little luck i'm hoping that might be the other rate controller i am not sure about that but i think we're gonna try this so we're gonna go up here and go down to boot options and we're gonna tell it to boot from number 12 that's probably gonna fuck us over but well we're gonna try that so yes uh, do we have to save that anywhere yes it does that save yes and escape and we'll see what happens i think i messed up i've unplugged the the dash here and i've taken the the adaptive card out of there and now the server won't boot anymore so i think i've, I've messed up the configuration that was on there and um, yeah it's getting late it's dark outside now so uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna end this video in a total failure and yeah that, this is crap so irritating but well shit like this happens that's why i um, do it at home and not at work so uh, remember to check out bargain hardware um, if you forgot about that, it was in the start of the video, you know, but um, yeah, check it out. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.